Welcome to Shot Clock. If you come in my lane, you getting your shot block. Coach Bub on the mic, VA is a hot spot. This is the podcast, tune into the broadcast. It might be a special guest, never know who gon' slide past. Got some topics to discuss while making the time pass. Let's talk about rap, let's talk about fashion, let's talk about sports. Or what's the latest gadgets and I ain't trying to brag. This right here, the best show. Cross over, then lay them up with the left, though. Let's go. You got the rock. Time ticking, who willing to take the shot? Shot, shot, clock, clock, running, 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 shot, shot, clock, clock, running, 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 shot, shot, clock, clock, running, 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 running. Yo, 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 it's your boy Coach Blood. We on another episode of the Shot Clock Podcast. And I got three very, very, very special guests tonight. I got Tiffany Applewhite, Amber Manuel, and Tiffany Titano tonight. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. Hey. How you doing? First, first group of ladies on Shot Clock, so I want to say thank y'all for working us, and let's go. Thank you for having us. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's start off... Um, Obviously, being uh, women, you know, playing basketball. How did you get your start playing basketball? And you know, what what inspired you and made you want to play basketball? Um, well, for me, it was more so my friends were trying out. Tiffany tried out with me. Right. So, what age is this right now? I was talking? in eighth grade. All right. So, your introduction grade. to basketball was eighth grade. Yeah, I was. In, I did ballet and cheerleading and like all that <laughs> early on, and then. My friends was like, try out basketball, I tried out in eighth grade. I made the team, a couple of them didn't. And then it was on from there. That's okay. what I thought so, so you was a natural. Okay, Amber, what, what about yourself? Um, same, I was in eighth grade. And um, more so, EJ played sports all the time and I would just kind of hang out at the gym and I was like, Dad, I want to play basketball. He was like, you want to play? I was like, yeah. So, um, he signed me up, I played rec ball. Um, I got cut from the first team. They put me on the ladybugs. So I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but from there, I loved playing it, and so I just continued to work on it. I would say my pops definitely influenced me to play because I was always taller than everybody. He was just like, you have the ball in your hand. So sixth grade, I just started playing. I wasn't doing anything but rebounding, but I was out there, so it just moved me in. Okay, so. Obviously, moving into your sport, playing basketball, your height. But I know for you know, growing up, I knew some taller girls. How was that growing up? You know, what I'm saying being tall. Mm. <laughs> you have to learn to embrace it. Yeah, yeah. You always in the back, and it's it's a lot. But you have to really yeah. learn to embrace it. And I'm glad to see now that a lot of young ladies are able to embrace it and be confident yeah. in being yeah. six two or six five. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Definitely. Uh, all right, that's what's up. Okay, so. You said, you know, around middle school we start to play, and then, um, so let's go to high school. Let's let's start for you, because um, I believe you will be the oldest. Uh, we're going to say the age, you know, I know you're 21. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so let's let's start for you in high school. What's your introduction to high school basketball, and is it something that you really want to do? Because like you said, you started in eighth grade, so is this, right. is this something now that's getting serious? Yeah, so I started know? in eighth grade. I was wrong. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. So, at, at, well, let me say, in middle school, we had to split the gym with the boys. So, when we had to do our layups, and that, that ball was bouncing off the backboard, yeah. you could hear the boys laughing, and that was like the worst thing for me. Like, I don't want to be embarrassed. So, that summer, Coach Parker from Pelham, the JV coach, he saw me somewhere, he talked to my dad, and was like, you know, let's get our AAU, bring over here. And then um, I worked out that summer, played JV at Kellum and then I got moved at the varsity like towards the end of the JV season and it just started getting, I mean, that's, as I kept getting better and better, it just started getting good for me. Okay. What about yourself, baby? Um, same, you have about eighth grade, right? Yeah. Going yeah in, so we're going into high school and it's getting serious now. Like. <laughs> right. It's, okay. So yeah, um, eighth grade, like I worked on my game. I was in the driveway. We had those hoops in the driveway. 
and like Tiff, I started getting good. Um, I had a really good eighth grade school year in middle school going into high school. My coach put me on JV, um, but by the end of that year, I had moved up to um, varsity as well. So in eighth grade for me, I came from, um, I was a private school, Christ the King. So I lived in Bayside, but I didn't know anybody out there or whatever. And it was either I'm going to Bayside, I'm going to Austin Smith, because my dad went to Austin Smith, or I'm going to Lake Teller playing with Coach Sorty. And my dad was like, we're just going to go to Bayside. We're going to see how, how it goes, if you like to open gym or whatever. And then I get in Bayside, Spady was like, you want to go to Ticket? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he was like, you play a summer league at Wilson? And I played summer league with them going into my ninth grade, and then I was just on varsity ever since. Okay. Alright, so things are picking up. Let's um uh, obviously all of you guys played in the uh the Beach District and at this time since then and now, Princess Anne has dominated <laughs> the district. So what was it like like was it was it a realistic thing of like saying, All right, we, we think we can compete and beat them? Absolutely. Or was it one of those things of like, all right, we all playing for like second or like so what what was that mentality, you know, knowing that you had that powerhouse? It's always we gotta get them. Gotta like get that's guaranteed. Number one challenge. <laughs> right. right. I mean that's that's what everybody that, that had to be the goal because that was the team to beat. But when I started, I mean, it was still like first Colonial was yeah, was a yeah, tough yeah. team. Yes. And Kellum. Kellum mm -hmm. When I played with Kellum we were tough. We had I mean it that starting five was tough there too, so I mean we beat, I remember that one year we beat PA by like one point when I was at Kellum and I played that varsity game. And that was like a championship <laughs> game. Like everybody yeah. came on the floor and it was yeah. just a regular season game. Mm -hmm. but, it was but like that was the team to beat. I mean, because they're coached well, they always had some <clears> solid <throat> players. And it was, I mean, shoot, now it's just like I played against some solid players. Just seeing where they went, you know, mm -hmm. and played college ball. So. What what do you think it is about that program that why they were able to be as good as they are and sustain it? Um, coaching, just their discipline. Um, they go after it, you know, and um, Dozier, he done let them <laughs> mess up a lot. Yeah, yeah, like it's pressure, pressure, pressure constantly, and that's how they play as well. But we did, we beat them my junior year, and it was like our championship. Okay. You know, but I did at least get on one year. I'm a shocker. <laughs> okay, so, so we got two of two the win, yeah. and we got one that's open. So so what was it like, though? Like, Is that the game where it's like, yo, I'm trying to go get 30 because I know it's going to be college scouts here. It's going to be, you know, a lot of people are going to be focused on and locked in on this game. Yeah, I don't know if it was so much recruiting. It was more so we just wanted to beat them. You know, yeah, like pride. I yeah, yeah, like I wanted, know. I wanted us. I'm sorry. I wanted us to win <laughs> so bad for Spady because it was like Spady could never beat. He was Dozier. a good coach. Too. Yes, he Spady. was excellent. He I love Spady. Yes, but he could never beat Dozier. So every time we played him, I was just like, God, please, like just <laughs> one time. And I remember one year we had it was Chibi, Talisa Smallwood. Amber Hurley, me, and I think Tony Harrison as a four, and like we were solid. But that year, Chibi also tore her ACL, and Talisa's father passed away. So it was like that was supposed to be our year. And I, I tell people all the time, understand with like sports, everything got to align. Like it can, it could, you got a perfect team, but like you said, somebody get hurt, somebody ineligible. Like it's, it's always something, you know. So you know, when it comes to sports. <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk about a little bit of like the coaching styles and how it was playing in your your, your different programs because obviously these are three different programs that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, you came at a time at last time where it's a a mixed start, brand new school, so it's definitely going to be rebuilding. So, what were your expectations coming from Callum in a winning program, knowing that I'm coming here and we're going to be? Yeah. It was it was really a tough decision because I had really just started on varsity and you know, like I said, it was a winning program, but then it was also, you know, the social aspect of it. Like all my friends from middle school, I'm about to, you know, they're all gonna be at Lansdown and just to really be a part of history, right? Be a part of the first basketball program. So that was kinda where I was. Um, so um, it was a rough start. You know, it was a rough start. Um, 
Obviously, we had my man Coach Griffin. Right? Yeah. 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 Ye
I mean, honestly, I guess to put it out there, like homosexuality was really kind of just coming out there. Yeah. It wasn't out there. It really, you know, people were kind of trying to keep it under wraps. They didn't really want people to know. But you know, girls were dating girls amongst the team, and you know, when they and they feelings, it affected the whole team. Now we got to go out here and play the game. But you know, you don't want nobody to know that y'all are in a relationship, so you still want to have that that trust within your players. So the coach don't know what's going on. He just like, what's going on with the team? You know. But I was gonna touch on that too. I remember we were meeting at school before we got on the bus and it had just come out that one of my teammates was gay. Mm -hmm. So then all of my other teammates were like, uh huh, she probably was trying to touch me in practice yeah. and all of this stuff. She don't want you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. She was trying to pull you. But I'm just sitting here like, no, we have a game and Spade about to lay all of us out and we don't mm -hmm. come correct. So it was just, it took a while because like she said, it was just when it was, you know, yeah. people were starting to come out. And that was some uncomfortable times as far as, you know, trying to, at that time, you know, I'm a captain, so it was just like, we got to figure a way to coexist and all be comfortable because at the end of the day, we all hit the hoop. Yeah. So that was definitely one of the most challenging times in the locker room and just period in high school with being with females. All right, so looking, looking back now, do you think comparing, you know, obviously you've all played at the college level, so you've been around men's programs, women's programs. Do you think it's harder to juggle a locker room of a women's team or a men's team, like from a coaching perspective? I would say it's harder to juggle a men's team mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. men have egos. You know, yeah. like that's what you're dealing with in a locker room, <laughs> a men's locker room is ego. Whereas I feel like women, you know, we coming together for a common goal. Yeah. There may be some egos or whatever, but it's like, Okay, sis, I still want to see you shine, you know, <laughs> yeah. and we coming together. Um, but yeah, men, their egos, so I think that's hard to control. Especially as So imagine football is 60. Yeah. 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 I mean, the toughest five players you play against. And it could be at a college level as well if, if you want to say college level. <laughs> Amber, we used to go at it. Yeah, we did. Definitely. We used to battle. We used to battle. Definitely. Hampton University. Mm -hmm. um, Hampton University. Yeah. 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 Ye
Brittany Harmon yeah. from PA, she was always gonna block a shot. And she always blocking shots and she can shoot the three too. Running the floor. She gotta keep <laughs> up with her running yeah. the floor. Like, oh my god. <laughs> um you said five? I mean, if players. I went through, you know, if you Players play. or the team? It could be players, teams. Um, in college, when I played with the city, Shaw was, Shaw's university was a, a tough team for us, at least for me. I felt, because they were physical and they were like. Who was one in the CI when you put, was it? Um, Shaw. Shaw. <laughs> Shaw won. Uh, we won one year by that, by that year that, that we won, but, yeah. Um, I'm trying to get it. I'm gonna throw Lake Taylor in mind because they had Jazz, yeah. Tanisha, they had a solid. Wasn't it Carol? And Love. Carmica. Yeah, the tall one, right? You yeah. played from Jimmy Sayers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carol Mika. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She came from Tallwood. Yeah, she yeah. did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Katara yeah. McMore. Oh, I forgot about KT. Yeah. yeah, she won't no joke. I played against her um, when she was at Elon. She was my sister last time. Yep. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so as a, as a, uh, player playing in the post. What what are you looking for in your point guard? Like, Somebody's gonna give me the ball. Please. Please. Give me the ball. Please. please. So 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 would you like playing with now, you know, the, all these point guards, they wanna score now. Like so it's a the game is different. Like yeah. Yeah. you you play you all played it still in a time where <coughs> you're still playing the game inside out. Yeah. Versus now is spread the court out and you right. might have a big yeah. that's but your big is really like a small forward. Mm -hmm. Right. So what what was that like now? Like how 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 did you see yourself playing in today's game now? Like if you had to play your game? Yeah, I probably would have to change my game to kind of adjust for the game now, because um, they don't you don't really see that post play, you know, like mm -hmm. you used to see with us. So, yeah. so so your game, like, like you said, you you stepped away more, so it would be definitely more of playing yeah. your type of style of play, with stepping away from the basket and being mm -hmm. able to put on the floor. Mm -hmm. But in the day, it's all about seeing your post players. Right. That was the one thing guards didn't do. You know what I mean? You had to kind of really get on them for them to be like, all right, let me get a ball so she can get on my gear. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna put y'all on the spot. Mm. Don't do that. Favorite teammate? Mm. Timbo, for me. Kimberly Jones, sorry. Um, yeah, she's just been my favorite. And she kind of, we became friends, we still friends. Why, why is she your favorite teammate? Um, I love her personality and her spirit in the locker room. You know, she was very, um, you know, I get kind of emotional. I would get, you know, mean, Aww. but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, okay, you need to get it Ready done. To get it. Where yeah. somebody could say it, and I'd be like, well, I meant it like she said it. You know? <laughs> gotcha. um, but she just brought everybody together. She was a great player. She's the main reason, one of the main reasons I went to High Point. And, um, <laughs> I know I'll be wrong if I ain't say it's the kid. You know, the kid that's my best friend, yeah, she right? Fight you. <laughs> she was like, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but kid, nah. This kid will fight. Yeah. We're used to, I don't know where she's you know, She yeah. definitely used to she, fight. She, she's in North Carolina and she'll probably be at my house tomorrow. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but. Um, no, nah, I would say her. Not just because she's my best friend, but she, overall, she's a good person, right? She can, she can you put in a room with anybody, she can talk to anybody. But same thing, like when you get emotional, when you get caught up, because I'll snap on my teammates quick. Mm -hmm. And she'll be the one to be like, hey, can't do that, you know? Like, calm down. So her, and then just even pushing me to like play on at the college level too, because, you know, I was on the fence about that. I know what I really wanted to do. Because, um, you know, coming to Lance now, we weren't really winning no games. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm playing AAU and. AU then is not AU now, so it's like either you at this tournament with all these coaches and you get looked at, if you're not there, it's just like you gotta do what yeah. you gotta do. You know, like, shoot, I mean, my dad recorded all our games and he sent my film to live in the city. That was, that I looked like that was the school I wanted to go to. He sent the film, I went on a visit, they gave me the scholarship, it was just like that. So. I would have to say my I love all my teammates, y'all watch this, I love all y'all. But my favorite teammate would have to be Talisa Smallwood when I was at Bayside because I can remember like if I would be having like, I would just like be in the slump and I'm just frustrated. I got my daddy in the stands cussing me out, baby cussing me out, and Ty is just like to you know like 
come on, we got it. And she was just always motivating everybody. And I knew that every time she hit the court, it was go time. Like she went a hundred miles an hour every time. It was no slowing down. So I could appreciate that because that made me want to go harder even if my shots aren't falling or. All right, so obviously we move on to college. Um, what is what is what is that experience like? You know, obviously you two on the end, both Tiffany's <laughs> went to you know HBCUs, and you went to High Point of the PWI. So, what is your college experience like? What is that like? The best time of my life. <laughs> yeah, the best time of my life. Uh, my sisters, I met my sisters, still friends with them to this day, and it was like Bayside was a good time, but college is like. I don't have to report to class on time. Nobody's keeping track of what I'm doing, and I don't like nobody's waking me up for school. I what? It was seriously. But the basketball aspect of it was real. In the beginning, we had Coach Sweat, and I remember that he would just make us. I love Coach Sweat. To be honest, he would make us just run a mile, and then we play five on five. Then, as Tiffany and I were talking earlier. Coach Owen took over, and it was hell. Like, it was literally hell. I remember she would tell us that we did not make the team. So for conditioning, we would have to wear black shorts and a white shirt and be on the track at 4.30, prepared to run. Mm. To the point that one of my teammates, she told us we were gonna have to run six miles, and me and all the post players looking at her like, six miles, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, we keep, we keep wrong here, you say, you Six miles, nigga, I am not across country. I am a post, it was not running six miles, ma'am. And she was dead ass serious. And one of my teammates ended up passing out by Rosa. Like ants on her face and everything. Damn. So we all thinking like, oh, we about to go to the hospital with her. Coach Owens, no ma'am, keep running. We'll see her at the hospital when y'all finish. Damn. Like, it was, college was really the best time of my life, but it also made me like, I think it helped me for the real world because with her, Baby gave me discipline, but with Coach Owens, it was like, you gonna do what the hell I said, or you out of here. Prime example of us, her suspending us indefinitely. I know you remember that. We were at Club 7 yeah. with the football team, the basketball team, the baseball, every team was in it. But apparently it was a problem that we were in there and we broke curfew, although every other athletic team broke curfew. And so, yeah, front of the newspaper, it's a little raggedy ass picture with a, a gym with five people, no, six people on the court. Cause we got suspended indefinitely just for breaking curfew, and it's it really it it was different, but it was the best time of my life. It was a learning experience. It definitely made me level up in reference to basketball, cause that's a different type of competition. Yeah. Like high school was fun, it was cool. Like me and Amber battling everybody else, but in college, it's like everybody, every school that you play in, those people are the best people from their area. So you gotta. Yeah, cause, you can't I, cause obviously, there. like like you said. You know, be the, the biggest or the tallest yeah. most games, unless you know playing Amber or something yeah. like that. College point guard is <laughs> you might catch a point guard. Yeah, damn it. It's like, yeah. So it's different. What about you at high point? Um. Yeah. Same that competition level. It was just like the next step up. You know. And um, we had Liberty in our conference. We were in the Big South Conference. And um, I don't know if you remember, but my freshman year, Liberty had that girl, I don't remember her name, but she was like almost seven feet tall, Feenstra. Damn. She went to the WNBA. You remember Feenstra? No, man. Katie, Katie Feenstra. Seven foot. What was she that? She was like six You had to guard her? Yeah. I had to guard her. Uh, yeah. Long I mean, night. You know, long <laughs> night. You know, I had fun. I bowed out. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was fun for me, but, um, but yeah, after her and then the triplets. Came to Liberty and I don't remember them, yeah. but all three of them got drafted to the WNBA. So, oh, so, so yeah, but it's just that next competition of them. Like Tiff said, everybody is good at that position. You know, everybody's like the hometown hero, or, you mm -hmm. know, so it's like y'all coming together and, um, you know, see what you got. What was it like culturally then? Culturally, um, it was very laid back, a little too laid back for my liking, you know, um, my coach. He had a really laid back approach. We were good. So, you know, he, it didn't take a lot of us. We were just really talented. It was just a matter of us all coming together. But at the same time, our practices would be like 45 minutes long and we're a division one program. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we go through our drills, we go through our plays, we go lift, and that's that. You know, so I, I don't think that we were really fully in shape come time for the season. 
um, that's when the talent had to just kind of kick in. But he would go play golf, you know. <laughs> you know, but um, but we won. So, but yeah, culturally, it was a lot like Kemsville, kind of what I was used to. Um, another reason why I decided to go to High Point, you know, just kind of that comfortability. But um, yeah. What about you, Pleasure City? I enjoyed it. I mean, <clears throat> college itself is fun. Like you said, you don't gotta worry about you know nobody really in your ear to make sure you're at class is really, you know, being self-disciplined. Um, Basketball-wise, like my freshman year, I, I've had, I had three coaches my college career. So I really didn't have much of a stability. It was kind of always up and down, um, somewhat a unique situation. Like, so my freshman year I had Coach Batch, but he recruited me. Um, but he was also really gung-ho. He had a lot of seniors. He was really gun on his seniors playing. So, you know, pretty much all the freshmen, no matter how hard we worked in practice, it was still like, you know, you'll get in the game, but, and he'll tell you, like, I got to make sure my, my seniors got it. He's like, you know, one of those coaches, which, you know, whatever coach your vote. Um, and then he decided to go to um, University of Maryland Eastern Shores, and that's when Coach Owens, mm. she was, you know, she came to Elizabeth City before she went to Norfolk State. <laughs> why, um, why, why are you calling Coach Owens? Coach Owens tried to go on my life. That's that's she was talking about. That. Yeah, okay. The same yeah, coach. so I mean, it's the same coach. I mean... So um, she got fired from Norfolk State? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> was it after she... After? It had the worst record in NCAA, Devon. Like, I mean, it was piss poor. <laughs> well, all right, so we there. <laughs> what, what is that like? What is where is the embarrassing? Where is the like? What is practice like? Like, is it one of those things where it's like you just going through the motions? Like, like I was I was telling Tip earlier, like Coach Owens was the best conditioning coach. She was it, when it comes to running, she's the best. She's the reason that I never got out of shape until I had my son, because it was just always run, 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 run. But as far as basketball, I can remember us being down by two points with maybe 15, 20 seconds left, and she's literally just walking down the sideline like this. It's no play. It's no nothing. It's just nothing. Like she, and I don't fuck it. I don't care if she hit it. She could not coach. Like I don't care. If she could not coach. She was a great conditioning coach. When it came to basketball, no man. Gotcha. No man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so she, she put no so. I mean she. So she was at Elizabeth City before she went to Norfolk State. So I had her my sophomore year and. Um, she brought her players. She came from Cheney State up in Pennsylvania. She brought some of her players down. Great, great teammates. I love them to death. And, um, but, you know, she really made it, in my opinion, you know, a competition. You know what I'm saying? It really wasn't that team atmosphere. It was more so like, you know, that's who you got to go up against. You know, you're spot. As, as you should already in your mind, you shouldn't have to tell her that as a coach. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. Um, great conditioning coach. She was like Coach Gregory. She had, it was called Hell Suicides. Did y'all have to do them? Yes, definitely. Hell Suicides. It's a regular suicide, but at every line, we had to run around at Elizabeth City. You go outside to the foyer, up the steps, up the stairwell, down, down the balcony, the top, mm. back down mm. the steps, around, that's and then the next line. Like, that's the suicide at each line. <laughs> so you touch the free throw line, you come back, you run around, come back. So they call them Hell Suicides. That's real. We had to do them. Like, maybe five, depending on what the issue was. Depending on how she felt. <laughs> that, too. I mean, but you know, like I pre -con I conditioning in the off season, even with Coach Bachelor, was pretty much the same. Like we'll get up at like four o'clock. We only had to run four miles, <laughs> and then we'll go lift weights, and then some days we'll have open gym. That that's kind of been always consistent throughout my college career. And then, um, but with Coach Owens, I kind of lost love for the game. Like uh, she really put me in that position. Um, on top of just everything else, right? Wanting to. Um, be with my friends that weren't playing basketball, you know, going to the parties, not really having to be in the day, you know, in the dorm at 11 o'clock. Like, you know what I mean? I want to be out there. I can hear everybody outside and music blasting. I'm in my dorm, like, they tell you, looking out the window. You can't do nothing. <laughs> like, you know what I'm mean? saying? Because they'll walk around the campus to see if you, you know, you're on cur curfew. Um, but I still thought it was just a great experience because it prepared you for life itself. Um, and then I quit, like I quit, <laughs> I quit my junior year mm -hmm. and um, like I, I ain't even going in the house, but I just quit. Um, 
I don't really regret it, you know, but I, I did, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? Now that I coach, I really don't because it really helps me when I'm coaching players, you know what I mean? Just to kind of get through their head and go through that experience because in my mind, I feel like I allowed her to do that, you know what I'm saying? Even though I lost the love, I still allowed her to, to get to me in that point, you know what I mean? Instead of just really fighting through all the adversity, but you learn your lessons. And then I ain't never, I ain't seen her since. But then I got Coach Carr, and I had to walk back on my senior year. Shout out to Coach Carr. Love Coach Carr and Coach Collar. And that was the hardest thing, like having to be a walk on, like having to go through that process. Because, yeah. you know, these are girls, even though I played with them before, I quit on them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's like, so now I got to come yeah, back. And, and earn their trust. Right, earn their yeah. trust, you know, apologize for quitting on them, kind of let them know that I can't, you know, I won't do that again type deal. And then I made the team, and then, you know, I enjoyed my senior year. Okay, so you talked about being at the, the bottom of the barrel. So, <laughs> from your experience, what was it like playing in the NCAA tournament? <clears throat> Well, we never made it to the NCAA tournament. Okay. We will always lose in the conference championship. Okay. Um, to Liberty. Yeah, um, almost Liberty. every year, and I think one year we lost to um, UNC Asheville. They had a really good team too. Um, so we would go to the NIT tournament, and um, what was that like? It was fun, you know. It was kind of like the almost NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, the competition was still, and every year we would play um, UNC Charlotte, mm -hmm. and so. Um, but yeah, it was cool. It was a great experience. Great experience. Okay. All right. So, how do how do y'all feel about? I know y'all seen the way that they treated the uh, the women's basketball <coughs> this year with the tournament with just some of the the different amenities and you know with the weight room and the food. What, <coughs> what do y'all? How do y'all feel about that? I think it's foul because when you sit there and look at it, it's like they're giving women TV dinners and the men are having full out buffet. Yeah, I see. Or in the weight room is they just got dumbbells to lift weights before the game and the man got a full like it like a gym full of equipment and it just makes you think about like how stuff is, how stuff was when I was in college, the boys gear was always better than ours. We may have all been sponsored by Russell in the beginning, but their stuff was always top notch until we got Coach Owens, and Coach Owens was, that's one, I, I'm going to give you credit for this, Coach Owens, besides conditioning, she always makes sure we stay fly. Yes. But the boys, no matter where I'm at, their gear is <coughs> always up to par. They're always eating whatever. And when I was at Norfolk State before Coach Owens, everywhere we went, Coach Sweat would find a Golden Corral or a Bob Evans. And the boys are sitting here eating, like, at five-star restaurants, whatever, like how we saw with the tournament this year. Like, it's crazy, but it's it's always been like that. I'm just glad that people get to see it now. And you can take that to like the pay with the WNBA compared yeah. to the men. I remember when, before I continued to get hurt and have surgery after surgery, they'd be like, you know, you want to go to the WNBA, you want to do this? And I will automatically say like, no, I'm going to go overseas. Ain't no bread in the yeah, WNBA. Yeah. yeah, I can make, <laughs> they get paid $35,000 in the WNBA and then they got to pay their agent. And what are they left with after that? And overseas, you getting paid more than that. And I can come here working the YMCA in the summertime and be good. So it's just, it's, I'm just glad that it's coming to light now because it's always been like that. But even with that, you got to go overseas and leave your family yeah, it's that, yeah, that's in the, a that's the, totally yeah. different country just to still play the game you love and get a decent play, yeah. pay, you know, save your money to come back home, yeah. you know. All right, so talking about, you know, just a lot of the things, what are some skills that basketball has taught you, like, for life? Like that you use every day or you take with it every day. Like you honestly say, I probably wouldn't have known this or learned this had I not played basketball. I think it's, I think really discipline. Yeah. At the end of the day, like a lot of people are not disciplined. You know what I mean? They they can really talk, you know, but they can't really do. And I don't think all athletes just you know. I mean, like I said, all, some athletes don't. They do the same thing, but I think discipline is really what I've learned the most. Just playing basketball, being part of the team, having those experiences, just that alone kind of separates you from a lot of people who have never had that experience um, or the opportunity. So that's something you just take with you forever. You know? I would piggyback off of what Tiffany said and say discipline as well as communication because mm -hmm. 
effective communication is so important and you have to talk on the court. Mm -hmm. You gotta talk in real life, whether it's at work, with your family, whatever, and that's something that I definitely learned to carry with me on and off the court because sometimes you don't you, you don't feel like it. it's like but nobody's gonna know what's going on, whether it's with a work base or home base, but you gotta talk. Whether we talking about setting up this play, what we running or whatever, so just carrying that into real life along with this and having like those tough conversations with the communication, like you know, yeah. I mean, in high school, like my mom and dad, had, they <coughs> weren't really having no conversations with no adults unless there was an issue. Other than that, you need to go talk to your teacher, you need to go talk to your coach if there's a problem. You go figure it out. So I think that helped me like going forward too, because I don't mind talking to my. There's a problem. I definitely don't mind saying it. And I think that helped too, because I, I used to be really shy. I think I still am a little bit, but like growing up, I was really shy. And I think basketball really helped with that too. All right, lastly, what's your favorite memory <laughs> of basketball? <laughs> Good and bad? It, it, it's, what, what's your favorite memory? Like, you know, some, something that you would never, ever forget about, you know, something that, you know, while playing basketball. I would say when we play Hampton, as you know, it's always packed and it's yeah. it's just a different type of energy. Yeah, that vibe, it, the band playing. And yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, so that is, I will never forget that. So that's, that's my thing in Hampton. That's a lot. It's hard <laughs> to narrow it down. I mean, um, even going to AAU tournaments like that, mm -hmm. was fun to forget high school. But I guess college just went in the um we did win the um the conference. So getting the rings and having the ring ceremony and all that, that was a great experience that I'll never forget. I don't know, I got a lot too. <clears throat> if we go college, I guess like we lost in the CIAA tournament one year and I think that I don't I like I'll never forget that. Like just being you know, remember how upset I was and just, you know, how much ambition you had going into that next season. And you, I remember hitting like a buzzer beater and your teammates like grabbing you. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember that too. It's a lot. It's a lot. I remember like Lansdowne, we, like our first year, we didn't win it. We won one scrimmage against Wilson and TJ didn't play. She was hurt. She had sore ACL. So we won that game by like one point. And I know what we would, um, because Roger, he was mad. <laughs> he was so mad. But it was like we almost had a chance to beat Green Run because Green Run was always at the bottom of the barrel. So it was just like, all right, that's mm -hmm. one game. Yeah, I know we're going to win. <laughs> and it was a tight, like it was a really good game. And I'll never forget, we were down by one point with like 19 seconds left. And <laughs> I'm like wide open at the basket. And this girl is just dribbling and dribbling. I'm like, yo, I mean, I'm jumping up and down. And she just stopped and just shot that bitch. And I just like <laughs> looked at that shit and go, bomb. <laughs> and you know, the boys used to line up in the hallway. Yeah. I remember walking up and saying, y'all fucking suck. Like, I would never forget that. <laughs> Coach Rob grabbed my hand like, what's wrong with you? Don't you ever do that shit. <laughs> he was in my shit. And I would never forget that because, again, like, you know, they're all just learning moments. And I was yeah. just so, like, determined to beat Green Run. Like, we lost the Green Run. <laughs> Candace, you know, Candace was there. She won't play no game. No, she won't go have it. She was like, we not losing the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about Candace Bryant. Yeah, she was good too. So, for, for my two that's married right here, right? If you and your spouse play one on one, who's winning? I'm dogging that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I was pregnant, dogging your ass. No, Love you. Not even close. close. What? He's a football player. What about you? Yeah, I'm winning that. Not even close. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be a close game, but I'm winning. I think we have played. I think we, yeah. I think he quit. <laughs> Not quit, but like, you know, oh, my phone ring. Hold right. On. You know what I mean? We've been married for four years, together for six, and he's still scared of this work. And I'm just like, there is so. Just give me a little drop stuff and I'll take you down there. He's scared. Damn. <laughs> Chris ain't played basketball. He was in the band and, you know, street and stuff. I mean. So uh, I appreciate y'all coming in. Thank you. This is good fun.
It's a trip down memory lane, especially all of y'all playing against each other. Y'all didn't even know I was setting all up like this. <laughs> I, I, know you. Yeah. I, like I got, I got, look, I got uh, JJ uh, Simmons and Mike Privet like that. They best friends. They play the right table. And they didn't even know that they was about to come do that. Oh, wow. Like that, so. okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, this was a pleasant surprise. It was. Appreciate it. Yeah. Shot clock. Oh, y'all yeah, gotta get my shirt. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm as strong as the woman next to me. Yes. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. All right.